Are you one of those who often find themselves wide awake between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., wondering why sleep seems to elude you during these mysterious hours? It's a question many of us have asked ourselves, isn't it? But what if I told you there's more to it than meets the eye? My brother, my sister, it might seem like a trivial matter, but let me assure you, it's far from ordinary. Have you ever stopped to ponder why you consistently wake during these early hours without the usual call of nature or the cries of a newborn? It's time to stop dismissing it as mere coincidence or inconvenience. Today, I implore you to consider a different perspective. For my friends, what you're experiencing might just be a spiritual awakening. Yes, you heard me right. You are among God's chosen, and these early morning taps on your consciousness could be a divine calling. Stick around, my dear friends, for in this video, I'll unravel the mystery behind these wakeful hours. You'll not only understand why God beckons you between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., but you'll also learn how to embrace and leverage this sacred time. But before we delve into the heart of the matter, if you're new to this channel, I urge you to hit that subscribe button. Join our community as we explore the depths of spirituality and unlock the wisdom of the divine. You know how sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., Ever wondered why that happens? Well, there's a reason, and it's not just because you can't sleep. It's actually a special time. In the spiritual world, it's like when God decides to pay a visit to his special ones. Yes, that includes you. It's a time when blessings are in the air, waiting for you to grab them. So, when you wake up during these hours, it's not because of insomnia. Think of it like this. You know how a mom's milk production peaks in the early hours to feed her baby? Well, in a similar way, God wants to nourish your soul during this time. He's like a loving parent, making sure you're well taken care of. You see, the Bible divides the night into four watches, each with its own significance. The first watch, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., was known as the evening watch. It marked the beginning of the night, a time for rest and reflection after a day's work. Then came the second watch, from 9 p.m. to midnight, known as the Midnight Watch. This was a time of transition, often associated with vigilance and preparation. The third watch, from midnight to 3 a.m., was called the Cock Crow Watch. It was during this watch that the rooster would crow, signaling the approach of dawn. This watch was often linked to spiritual awakening and repentance. This watch, from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., held special significance in the biblical narrative. It was a time when the night was darkest, but also when the dawn was near. In the Bible, dawn holds a very significant meaning. It's a period of awakening, transformation, or enlightenment. One of the most profound examples of the significance of the fourth watch hour is found in the story of Jacob wrestling with an angel throughout the night. This encounter, recorded in the book of Genesis, reveals the transformative power that can be experienced during these sacred hours. Jacob, a man who had struggled with his identity and purpose, found himself wrestling with an angel in the darkness of the night. This was not a physical battle, but a spiritual one, representing Jacob's inner turmoil and the journey of self-discovery. As the night wore on, Jacob refused to let go of the angel, insisting, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Genesis 32, verse 26. This demonstrates Jacob's determination and hunger for divine blessing, despite the challenges he faced. It wasn't until the fourth watch, just before dawn, that Jacob's persistence bore fruit. The angel touched Jacob's hip, leaving him with a limp, but also granting him a blessing and a new name. 
Israel, which means he struggles with God or God prevails. This pivotal moment marked a profound transformation in Jacob's life. He had wrestled with his fears, doubts, and uncertainties throughout the night, but in the end, he emerged victorious with a renewed sense of purpose and identity. Another significant event during the fourth watch was the Israelites' miraculous escape from the Egyptians. In Exodus 14, verses 24 and 25, we read how the Lord intervened during the fourth watch, causing confusion among the Egyptian forces and paving the way for Israel's deliverance. Jesus himself demonstrated the importance of the fourth watch through his actions. He often withdrew to pray in solitude during these early hours as mentioned in Mark 1, 35. And it was during the fourth watch that Jesus walked on water, showing his mastery over the forces of darkness and fear, Matthew 14, verses 25. But that's not all. Let's not forget the story of Mary Magdalene, who discovered the empty tomb of Jesus early in the morning while it was still dark. John 20, verse 1. Her encounter with the risen Christ marked the beginning of a new era of hope and redeeming of a new era of hope and redemption. So, my friends, don't brush off these early morning wake-up calls. Embrace them. Trust that God has something good in store for you. Just like Isaiah said, let's be open to what God wants to teach us. Let's be open to what God wants to teach us us. As Isaiah beautifully expressed in Isaiah 50, verses 4 and 5, Morning by morning, he wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned, not backward. However, my dear friends, be aware that the temptation to go back to sleep will be strong. Satan is keenly aware that your blessings are available to you during these sacred hours. He will try to confuse you, making you believe that you are simply tired or suffering from insomnia. He may even lull you into sleep, disrupting your prayers and spiritual communion. But I urge you, my friends, to soldier on. Do not let the enemy rob you of this divine appointment with God. Stay vigilant, stay awake, and stay awake, and stay engaged in prayer and reflection. I understand it may be difficult, but remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, 1 John 4, verse 4. Now, as promised, I will reveal three things you should do every day when you wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. These practices will help you align with God's will and receive His blessings in abundance. So stay tuned, my friends, as we embark on this journey of spiritual growth and divine encounter together. Without wasting time, let me reveal the first thing you should do if you wake up in the fourth watch, and that is, listen to the whispers of your soul. Now, when you wake up during these early hours, it's easy to feel frustrated or even anxious. But what if I told you that these moments hold a deeper meaning? Perhaps it's your soul trying to communicate with you. In the silence of the night, amidst the stillness, there's an opportunity to connect with your inner self and with the divine. Take this time to reflect, to pray, or simply to listen. You might be surprised by the insights that come to you when you embrace the quiet. So, start by remembering your last dream before waking up. Why is your dream important? Because God speaks through dreams, offering guidance and instruction for the day ahead. As Job chapter 33 Verses 14 and 16 reveals, God speaks once, even twice, yet we may not perceive it. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night, when deep sleep falls upon us. In these moments, God opens our ears and seals our instruction for the day. So, my friends, 
Don't ignore your dreams or dismiss them as mere fantasies. They are messages from God encoded with wisdom and guidance. While not every dream may be clear or easily understood, it's essential to perceive their meaning. Now that you remember your last dream, pray accordingly. By understanding the message God is conveying through your dreams, you can pray effectively and align your prayers with His will. Now, what if you find yourself in a situation where you didn't have a dream or you simply don't remember it? In such moments, it's essential to turn inward and listen to your inner soul. Listening to your inner soul will guide you in prayer. It's crucial because failing to do so may lead you to pray for the wrong things or for situations that are not under attack. Satan may cunningly mislead you to pray fervently for your marriage. For instance, when it's not the area under attack. As you pray for what's not under attack, the devil can stealthily target and undermine other areas of your life, such as your finances or the fruit of your womb. Hence, it's vital to listen attentively to that inner voice speaking to you. By tuning into your inner soul, you gain clarity on what exactly to pray against and how to put on the armor of God. This ensures that your prayers are targeted, strategic, and effective in combating the spiritual battles you face. Secondly, don't let those early morning hours go to waste. Instead of tossing and turning, use this time to set intentions for the day ahead. Think of it as laying the groundwork for what's to come. Proverbs 16, verse 3, ask us to whether it's visualizing your goals, expressing gratitude, or simply asking for guidance, starting your day with intention can make all the difference. It sets the tone for a purposeful and fulfilling day, no matter what challenges may arrive. As we know, these early morning hours are also the darkest. It's during this period that Satan loves to launch his attacks, especially when you are asleep. Jesus himself acknowledged the power of darkness in Luke 22, verse 53, stating, But this is your hour when darkness reigns. These words provide profound insight into the spiritual warfare that occurs during the darkest hours of the night. During the darkest hours, the realm of spiritual warfare intensifies. Satan known as the Prince of Darkness, seizes this opportune moment to launch his attacks, seeking to sow confusion, chaos, and discord in the lives of God's children. As Ephesians 6, verse 12 reminds us, our battle is not merely against physical adversaries, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Satan strategically targets the darkest hours to disrupt our plans, derail our purposes, and sow seeds of doubt and fear. The consequences of spiritual attacks during the darkest hours can be profound. Many find themselves bewildered and wondering what went wrong when their carefully laid plans unravel or unexpected challenges arise. Just as a lion prowls in the darkness, seeking to catch its prey unaware, so too does Satan seek to catch us off guard during the darkest hours. He seeks to devour our peace, our joy, and our sense of purpose, leaving us vulnerable and disoriented. In light of this spiritual reality, it becomes imperative for us to take authority and remain vigilant, especially during the darkest hours. We must clothe ourselves with the armor of God, as outlined in Ephesians 6, verses 13 to 18, and stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. By doing so, we can resist the attacks of the enemy and maintain our position of strength and authority in Christ. We can navigate the challenges of life with confidence, knowing that we are equipped with the power of God to overcome the darkness that seeks to engulf us. So, 
If you want to maintain victory throughout the day, you must take authority before the light breaks. If you're a parent, recognize that you are a watchman over your children. It's your responsibility to guard and protect them from the schemes of the enemy. God holds you accountable for their well-being, as stated in Ezekiel 33, verse 7. Therefore, when you wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., don't simply toss and turn. Take time to surrender your day to God, committing both yourself and your loved ones into His care. And the third thing you should is to spend time with God. If you find yourself awake between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., seize the opportunity to fellowship with God. Remember, you are on a spiritual watch, and this watch hour is a time when your spirit is most receptive to God's voice. As Job chapter 33 and verses 14 and 15 reminds us, For God does speak, now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, God will speak to you and seal deep instructions in your spirit. To receive and decode these instructions, engage in meditation. Give your full focus to acknowledging God's presence. Whether lying still or sitting up, create an atmosphere of silence and reverence. This is not the time for multitasking. It's a sacred moment of communion with the divine. As you meditate, Ask God to speak to you. Seek specific instructions for your life, your business, your finances, and your loved ones. Be open to divine insights and solutions to long-standing issues you've been facing. Allow God to refresh and inspire you with new ideas and perspectives. Embrace the fourth watch hour as a time for spiritual awakening in your walk with God. Experience an open heaven in your relationship as you consistently commune with God during these sacred hours. Remember to document everything God says, including your thoughts and concerns, and patiently await His response. Now that you understand why God wakes you up during the fourth watch hour and what you must do, one question remains, how can you sustain this practice? It's natural for human beings to grow tired quickly, especially when it comes to waking up during the early hours of the morning. In Psalm 120, 1, verse 4, we find assurance that indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Just as God is ever vigilant and attentive to his people, so too must we strive to maintain our spiritual watchfulness and commitment to fellowship with Him. One way to sustain this practice is by establishing a consistent routine. Set a regular bedtime and wake-up time, ensuring that you prioritize sufficient rest to maintain your physical health and energy levels. By incorporating waking up during the fourth watch hour into your daily schedule, it becomes a natural part of your spiritual discipline. Another crucial tip for sustaining your practice of waking up during the fourth watch hour is to keep yourself pure. In the pursuit of drawing closer to God, maintaining purity of heart, maintaining purity of heart, mind, and spirit is essential. As Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4 declares, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. God desires sincerity and integrity in our worship and devotion to Him. James 4, 8 urges us to, Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. By purifying our hearts, and minds. We create space for God's presence to dwell within us and transform us from the inside out. Inevitably, we may stumble and fall short of God's standard of holiness. In such moments, 
practice humility and repentance, turning away from sin and seeking God's forgiveness and restoration. Allow His grace to cleanse and renew you, empowering you to walk in righteousness once more. 1 John 1.9 assures us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather before you in the quietude of the early morning hours, we come with humble hearts and open spirits. We acknowledge your sovereignty and goodness, and we thank you for the privilege of seeking your face in prayer. Lord, we recognize the significance of the fourth watch hour and the divine appointments you have prepared for us during the sacred time. We surrender our hearts, minds, and bodies to you, inviting your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh and guide us into deeper intimacy with you. Father, we repent of any sins or distractions that have hindered our fellowship with you. Wash us clean with your precious blood and purify us from all unrighteousness. Help us to keep ourselves pure, guarding our hearts and minds against the schemes of the enemy. Lord, we lift up our desires, dreams, and concerns before you, trusting in your wisdom and provision. Grant us clarity of mind and sensitivity to your promptings, that we may discern your will and walk in obedience to your word. And now, Lord, as we enter into a time of silent meditation and reflection, speak to our heart and seal your deep instructions within us. May your presence be palpable in this moment, filling us with peace, joy, and renewed strength for the day ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Has this video blessed you? Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't, and like the video to get more notifications that will improve your life and walk with God.